Crisis in Correction series. We speak with that former prisoner who is now paralyzed after the attack. I team investigator Adam Walser has uncovered while the state has paid out more than four and a half million dollars of your tax money to settle this case. The officers have yet to face any criminal charges nearly three years later. I never get out. Cheryl Weimar appreciates the little things. A few minutes of fresh air in a park away from her nursing home. Hi. Hey Cheryl, we're glad you're well. well I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I know you've had a, a rough go on it the last few months. So. This was our fourth planned interview. The others were canceled when the 53-year-old's fragile health failed. She's been hospitalized seven times in six months, but this day she enjoys her favorite meal, a Big Mac. This hamburger is so delicious. Do you see the cheese and the lettuce? Feeding her is her care manager, registered nurse Gina Arsenal. All she can do is lay in her bed, lay in her chair. She's highly dependent for any task. Brushing her teeth, combing her hair, getting a shower. All right, where do you want her to be? Turn around just a little bit there. I think you're in a good spot. Cheryl's arms and legs are limp and useless, but she still wants to look her best. It looks good. It gives you lips color. Every waking moment, she's in pain. I can feel my bones, and it's like somebody had took an axe and went right through me. Yet Cheryl believes Florida's prison system is far more broken than her body. When I woke up in that ICU, knowing that I was paralyzed from the neck down, I didn't see me making it. Here we go before sunrise. We traveled more than 400 miles to visit Cheryl in Fort Walton Beach at one of the few places in Florida that can provide for her extensive needs and accepts convicted felons. She had one of the worst upbringings I've ever seen of any of my clients. Attorney Ryan Andrews represented Cheryl in her civil lawsuit against the Florida Department of Corrections. He says Cheryl may look like the girl next door in these photos, but she was abused as a child, ran away from home, turned to prostitution and began drinking and using drugs. By her early 20s, she was homeless. She was living under a bridge after Hurricane Andrew and gave birth on all fours under an overpass. Cheryl was arrested for petty crimes over the next two decades. In 2014, her then boyfriend Stephen Horowitz was arrested for punching Cheryl and kicking her in the ribs at this Broward County Hotel. He beat her up, he got out, came back, she was afraid, stabbed him, and then she got arrested. I had to fight. I had to do the best I could to get out of the situation. And he nearly killed you, right? He nearly killed me. In 2015, Cheryl was convicted of domestic violence for stabbing Horowitz with a steak knife and sentenced to seven years at Lowell Correctional Institution in Ocala, where Gina previously worked as a nurse. What was it like at Lowell? It's horrific. Um, people are treated like dogs. On August 21st, 2019, Cheryl was assigned to clean toilets. But she says she was in pain from a hip injury. I did about seven toilets and I realized I couldn't do anymore. So I got down to the eighth one and I said, I can't do it. That's when she says correction officer Ryan Dion and Lieutenant Keith Turner handcuffed her, then attacked her in front of more than a dozen witnesses. The lieutenant come running up in the back with his steel toe boot and put it right through my spine. I mean, I went to my knees. According to the lawsuit, while she was on the ground, they brutally beat her with blows to her head, neck, and back. She was elbowed and kneed in the back of her neck by at least one of her attackers, causing her to suffer a broken neck. They carried me across the dirt, the cement with my neck going both ways. The girls even said they're carrying a dead person leg. In one of the videos, her head, her chin is touching her chest in a way that's physically impossible without a broken neck. Andrew says he can't share the disturbing videos due to a settlement agreement. Her labored breathing, her attempts at crying, it, it was horrible. Her begging, saying she couldn't move her extremities, I mean, it's horrific. Airlifted to a hospital, Cheryl underwent multiple surgeries and months of treatment. Initially, the guards accused of assaulting her remained on the job despite their questionable past. Everybody covers everybody's back. And so you keep those bad apples? Yeah and you just sweep it under the rug and go on about your business. Both Dion and Turner had records of violence toward women and girls. 
The lawsuit says Dion was arrested in 2013 for beating his then-girlfriend, as well as biting her neck and head area. The charges were dropped when his victim wouldn't testify. The lawsuit also alleges Lieutenant Turner showed violent, threatening, and abusive conduct toward women on dozens of inmate complaints against him. A Department of Justice investigation into the mistreatment of prisoners at Lowell says Turner was accused repeatedly of sexually abusing multiple prisoners at Lowell, but remained in his position until 2019 when he was arrested for sexually molesting two minor girls. Because of their histories, we are showing mugshots from previous arrests. They could have terminated one of the individuals we sued for any of 10 different things that he'd had complaints against him for. Um, they could have fired him for those. They didn't, and that gave him the opportunity to be there and do what he did to Cheryl Weimar. Transcripts show Dion and Turner asserted their Fifth Amendment rights more than 600 combined times during depositions. In their affirmative defenses, Dion and Turner filed in the lawsuit, they stated that their actions were not committed in bad faith with malicious purpose or in a manner exhibiting wanton or willful disregard of human rights or safety. Attempts to contact Dion and Turner for comment were unsuccessful. The Department of Corrections settled the lawsuit in 2020, paying $4.65 million. FDLE and the Department of Corrections spent more than two years investigating the beating. Their findings were turned over to the state's attorney in November, but nearly three years after the attack, neither officer has been charged. I mean, they have everything they need to charge these guys. When I did a crime, I had to pay for my crime. I feel as though they're not above the law. I feel as though that they should have to pay for what they've done to me. And they haven't. And they haven't. I'm I-Team investigator Adam Walser taking action for you. And you can see our months-long crisis in corrections investigation into problems with Florida's prison system by going to our website at abcactionnews.com.